Hello Penguinauts, I'm the Baby Penguin and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Fall of Kerbin. We are now well and truly into the new late World War II era and Tate is firmly on the back foot. We have started targeting his industrial base and we've completely flattened Osiris Fortress. And as such, he's put some pretty formidable defences around his next city, which is on our list, Rockdale. He has placed the world's very first rocket interceptor along with one of his conventional fighters and a lot of very nasty anti-aircraft guns. But we are not going to let this deter us. We've spent an entire supply unit building a new type of bomb. Yes, the 12,000 pound tall boy bomb. Because this is a new weapon, city health has actually increased from 10,000 to 15,000. So we can't flatten the city this turn, but we can certainly make a massive dent in it. So, we're facing some pretty considerable odds here. So, we're sending three of our T9 Falcons, which we launched before the late World War II era, and the T262 Raven, which we launched last turn, our jet fighter, to escort our BH-17 Albatross, which we're launching this turn. Uh, it's got a few more 50 cals, but it is still a sitting duck when it comes to enemy fighters, and that rocket interceptor is approaching rapidly. I was even taken aback by just how fast this was. I knew it would be quick, but it's got up to altitude almost instantly. Thankfully, we get our tall boy away, and here it comes. It hits us a few times, does a few glancing hits, but thankfully we just about managed to escape it. If that had been fitted out with 30mm cannons, we would not have survived that. Thankfully though, it only has 20mm Hispanos, not the 30mm MK103s. If it had those, our bomber would not have survived. And thankfully, we brought along the TE-262. Our Falcons just have no chance in hell of catching it, but the 262 has got a slight chance and because of that it can drive it away from the bomber. If we hadn't had the 262 with us it would have been able to make a couple more passes and I'm sure that our albatross would have been shot down. That rocket interceptor is ridiculously fast, its rate of climb is phenomenal. Truly a terrifying adversary. Our 262 as you see has driven it away but unfortunately it flies over the anti-aircraft guns and it gets taken out. It has done its job though, it's drawn the Draco well away from our bomber and thankfully just as it's about to catch up on our bomber it runs out of fuel. The only weakness of these goddamn rocket interceptors is their very very limited um, amount of time they can actually spend in the air which is very similar to the um, disadvantages of the real life Messerschmitt 163 rocket interceptor uh, which I might make uh, one of those informational informational in there. It's a documentary like videos on uh, at some point if you guys are interested in that. But anyway, even without fuel, it is still a rather terrifying adversary. It's so light that it's actually a very good glider. So I actually went in almost suicidally fast there with one of my conventional fighters and then realized, no, it's, it's still quite dangerous. So I need to actually be a little bit careful. But soon enough, it starts running out of energy and it has to go in for a landing. Our BH-17 has long since escaped at this point, so I just decided that we'd use our remaining three fighters to simply finish off the rest of Tate's Air Force. He's got one of his new fighters here, but we outnumber him, thank God. So he's got one of his rocket interceptors and his S6F. I've forgotten the call sign of it, but it is a very remarkable flying machine, as we'll see very shortly. But the Draco has completely run out of fuel, altitude, and energy, and as such, it is now a complete sitting duck. Now we're using tactics which um, the Allies actually used against Messerschmitt 163s in reality. There's no way they were going to catch them while they were flying, but they just simply caught them while they were landing or taking off as such. So it's now completely run out of fuel. All we have to do is circle and then sure enough it lowers its landing gear, goes in for a landing and there's nothing it can do. We open up with our 20mm Schwack cannons and we rip it to pieces. There we go. Just strafing it and sure enough, he's dead. If it had landed a little closer to the city, we would have had uh, probably a few more problems. And if Tape had a bit more conventional fighter cover, he probably could have saved that. But he only had one of his uh, new aircraft here. So thankfully, we're now on a room 3 to 1. But this is still a very deadly aircraft. It actually rips a wing off of one of my other fighters. And it crashes just then, although I couldn't actually get it on screen. And this is a remarkable flying machine. We actually managed to hit it and take off one wing, but it keeps flying. This this thing is ridiculous. I don't know how on earth tape has done it, but if they had actually come out here with a little bit of a heavier armament, perhaps 30 millimeter cannons, uh, or just had more of them here, we would have seriously struggled. But as it stands, it's vastly outnumbered and our slightly inferior 
um, although, you know, numerically superior aircraft, are able to hit it a few times. And there we go, we rip off the remaining chunk of its wing. And it, it's still, still quite good at flying, but uh, soon enough, it starts to lose control, enters a flat spin, and the pilot can't recover. And it soon plummets into the snowy wasteland below. Very, very terrifying aircraft, but Tape just has not deployed them in any real intelligent manner. So he's stretched his air force very thin, and as such, we can gain air superiority. Yes, here we go. Our remaining T9 Falcons, the remaining two, and five of our new T10 kites. Pretty much identical to the T10, uh, T9 Falcon, except they have 30mm MK103 cannons, because of course we've increased the amount of armament uh, that our fighters and all our aircraft can carry. And Tape has put four of his new fighters here at my old forward operating base. As I said, he has spread his air force very thin, and this turn he more than pays the price for it. He's got four of these fighters, and no matter how exceptional they are, they are outnumbered almost two to one. There is very little they can do, and with our 30mm cannons, it doesn't matter how much they evade. If they get hit by them once, one round can rip off an entire wing. These are ridiculously powerful weapons. We don't carry a huge amount of ammunition for them, but I've set up the guard mode so that they only fire in short bursts. They can serve their ammunition, uh, and they only fire um, now and then when they have a good shot on the enemy. And sure enough, we release our wing, and we just, we just want to stay over them for a little bit longer while they go in and uh, take out the main bulk of that fighter group. Uh, we're going to go after this one over here. If Tape had put some anti-aircraft guns here, we wouldn't have been able to do this, but we're diving in on them as they're taking off while they have very little altitude, very little energy, and they're essentially just sitting ducks. If Tape had a few anti-aircraft guns, we would have held back and let them come out and intercept us, and they would have been on an even playing field, uh, which we saw earlier makes these very ferocious fighting machines. But as such, they just they don't stand a chance. They're outnumbered two to one. They're just taking off. We're picking them off like fish in a barrel. And here we go, we're just diving in on this one, it's sort of been separated from the main group, probably trying to escape, well we're not going to allow that. We open up with our 30 mils, and sure enough, shred it to pieces within seconds. Fly through the debris, get quite a cool shot there, and there we have it. There are only two remaining, and uh, they certainly don't last long. As I said, Tape has a potentially war-winning aircraft here, but he's just not being particularly smart with the way he deploys them, and sure enough, our wingmen fly in, and even when it starts to get some pot shots out on us, starts to gain a bit of an advantage, two of my wingmen fly in, and it, look, <laughs> it is cut to pieces within seconds. There's just very little you can do. Um, tape's facing the same problem that the Luftwaffe had, you know, late days of World War II. They had some exceptional aircraft, like the Focke Wolf 190, but when you're outnumbered a million to one, doesn't matter how good your aircraft are. There's just very little you can actually do. We start flying over towards Tape's final aircraft, but uh, it doesn't actually last particularly long. Once again, 30 mils open up, a few more 20 mils as well. We've got our Falcons and our Kites engaging this. You know, we just wanted as many aircraft in the air as possible, so it doesn't matter that our Falcons are very slightly obsolete. They still use the same airframe, which is still an exceptional airframe. And sure enough, it crashes into the ground. The sun's setting though, so we're actually going to have to land at our forward operating base and wait for sunrise before we head out and attack Valley. But there we go. A display that uh, certainly having an exceptional aircraft, you know, a single exceptional design cannot win a war. And uh, yeah, Tapes certainly lost a lot of aircraft this turn. Our aim is to gain air, complete air superiority over him, which is still very, very far away. You know, Tape can, uh, can probably quite easily claw this back if he's smart about it. Um, air superiority has always been quite a uh, a difficult thing to achieve in Fall of Curb, and Tape's gained it for a couple of turns in the past. I've always, I've tried to gain it, but whenever I try to gain it, Tape always fights viciously for it back. But anyway, now it's night time, we have a submarine off the coast of Osiris Fortress, and we have two torpedoes headed straight for one of Tape's new light cruisers, and they certainly do not react well to being torpedoed. Tape actually managed to find and sink two of my submarines just before the late World War II era. But the thing is, submarines are really cheap. I can afford to be losing them. Tape cannot afford to be losing any ships at this stage. We already massively outnumber him. He needs every last ship he can get. And we're sinking them faster than he can launch them even before the battle. 
The first two torpedoes didn't manage to sink this Javelin class light cruiser, so we send another two its way, and now that submarine is completely out of torpedoes and pretty much defenseless, but it's managed to sink a light cruiser, and that's certainly gonna hurt. We're going straight for the light cruiser because, of course, uh, we want to attack this base with a few of our carrier aircraft later, and we want to make that as easy as possible because those are some pretty deadly ships when it comes to taking out enemy aircraft. Anyway, before that carrier attack, we have a few more remnants of Tape's Air Force to mop up. He now has three S5F Sparrows, so obsolete fighter aircraft, over here at Cathenia's Valley, and an Osprey attack aircraft. I say that those Sparrows are obsolete. They're not actually obsolete. They, they're, st they're still the same airframe, but they just have a slightly weaker armament. Although I'm not sure whether they actually have less cannons, they might just carry more ammunition. I'm not entirely sure, of course all classified information, and I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, as you know, before we didn't lose a single aircraft in the last uh, engagement, and even though they're going to be on a level playing field in terms of altitude, again, we massively outnumber them, and they're obsolete, so this is not going to go well. However, um, surprisingly, Tape's Osprey flies straight in and kamikazes into one of my aircraft into one of my T-10 kites. Um, that was very strange. <laughs> I mean, hopefully they're hoping to avoid the uh, kind of massacre that happened at uh, my old forward operating base in which they didn't shoot down a single one of my aircraft. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I, I didn't realize Tate was quite so desperate as to resort to kamikaze and suicide tactics. But no, apparently, <laughs> apparently he is that desperate at this point. And now, of course, it's just uh, the remaining six of our aircraft up against three of Tape's S5F Sparrows. They're still very deadly aircraft, but as I said, they're outnumbered, even heavier this time. And they don't even have as heavy armament as the ones we went up against uh, in the forward operating base. So this is going to be yet another turkey shoot. And sure enough, the first one is blown out of the sky. One does actually get onto my tail, as you see here. Um, but we throw some evasive maneuvers, and naturally, Cathenian pilots can't aim for shit, so we're absolutely fine. We put some shots into another one over there, and all we have to do is get a few hits with our 30 mils. We are being chased very closely by another one of his aircraft. I don't know what my wingmen are quite doing at the moment, um, but we're throwing ourselves around uh, while trying to get a few pot shots off at this aircraft, and sure enough, we blow it out of the sky, we put a hard turn to the right to try and throw off their aim. Thankfully, we just about managed to avoid getting blown out of the sky. As I said, they're still exceptional aircraft, there just are not enough of them. And Tape spread himself very thin this turn. If he'd put his entire air force at Cathenia's Valley or even at Rockdale, maybe he could have actually made a bit of a dent in my air force. But as it stands, no, they are completely vanquished. This doesn't mean we have air superiority. Air superiority has proved to be a very elusive thing, as I said, but uh, we've certainly made a lot of progress towards it. And sure enough, our two carriers, the KUS Nicolay and the KUS Carl Mason, are within striking range of Osiris Fortress. Just, so just before they head out to link up with the rest of our fleet, they're going to launch an attack. So first up is one of our dive bomb aircraft. They're going to go for the USS Titan Tapes Carrier Aircraft. Of course, we can't stop the Corsairs taking off, but we can stop them landing again. Um, I went straight for this carrier, mainly just because carriers are easy targets. Uh, they're massive sitting ducks, and usually it only takes a single bomb uh, to finish them off. And we're launching more air attacks later on in the turn, so I'd very much like to not have any aircraft harassing me while we're doing that. We have two carriers, so we can launch two strike waves. So we're going straight in for a dive bombing attack, and bombs away! We get out of there pretty quickly, because the anti-aircraft fire is starting to get a lot heavier. However, Tape's put his carrier quite a way away from his main fleet, so the anti-aircraft fire isn't actually that insane, so we can drop our bomb uh, with relative accuracy. And sure enough, it goes in and it hits that carrier pretty damn hard. It may not look like there was a massive explosion there, but uh, things start taking damage and it starts to sink. Um, as you see, you don't see a huge explosion there, but uh, I'm not sure whether it's BD Armoury simulating fire or etc. But uh, it starts gradually taking damage and as it sinks, it begins to explode. Uh, we just swap to it now. You can see, yep, explosions ripping through it and surely its fate is completely sealed. Anyway, we now have three of Tape's Corsairs to deal with 
Uh, unfortunately, we only have 50 cows, and we do not have many of them. These are not heavily armed planes. These are still actually early World War II uh, aircraft, so they haven't been updated. Uh, they haven't got any better armaments yet. They're designed to be bombers. Our A6 turn carrier based fighter aircraft managed to deal with an entire squadron of Corsairs within about a minute. Uh, <laughs> not going to happen here. And 50 cals, uh, especially after the recent updates to BD Armory, they really just they can't do enough damage to these aircraft. Not only are these pretty beefy aircraft, but they're also pretty fast and they're pretty maneuverable. Um, Tape sort of designed these as fighter bombers, I guess, and the real life Corsair was, of course, uh, a heavy, well, not a heavy fighter, but it was quite a large and powerful fighter aircraft. Um, but we just simply can't do enough damage to them, and they likewise can't do enough damage to us. So we chase them around for quite a bit, but uh, after a while, we actually start to run out of ammunition. Uh, we do actually chase them down for a bit. We get some good hits, do a little bit of damage, but none of the aircraft are actually blown out of the sky. But it doesn't really matter. All we have to do is drive away these aircraft. Um, and so we continue our we can continue our bombing raid. Uh, one does actually get onto my tail at one point and blows off our rudder, but then it shortly after just runs out of ammunition entirely. So there we have it. Tapes Air Force here are uh, completely unable to stop us. So since everything's out of 50 cal ammunition, we might as well just continue our bombing raid as there is very little that those Corsairs can actually do to stop us shy of ramming us like that Osprey did earlier. So here we go. We're going in for the first torpedo. Run. However, I made a pretty large blunder here. I flew in over the port where there are 40mm anti-aircraft guns. This was not a bright idea at all. Um, I just wanted to fly in as fast as possible and get out of here um, because the longer we stay here, of course, the longer we risk getting blown out of the sky by the anti-aircraft guns. But yeah, that was just complete suicide. We flew in right over the bay and we paid the price. So the next attack is going to go in from the side. As you see, the uh, USS Titan has finally breathed its last breath and has begun to sink into the harbour. Truly a pretty good victory. However, the first ship we're going for here is one of Tape's new Hammer Class Battle Cruisers, the USS Thor. This thing has 12-inch guns, which uh, are very rapid firing and also they're high enough caliber to do some pretty serious damage to our battleships. Probably not our the AUS Lance Fox, our Emperor class, but almost certainly our King class battleship could take some damage and possibly be sunk by guns of this caliber, although it is more likely to be a cruiser killer. Either way, this ship needs to die, so we are going to torpedo it to absolute hell. So here we go, just launching the torpedo, and there we go. Okay, let's get out of here. Um, one of the reasons this video actually took so long to make was because the NAS torpedoes have been playing up. We finally fixed them after conversing with ACIA, uh, the very, very friendly and very helpful developer of naval artillery systems who gives us all of these amazing weapons to play with. And we do quite a considerable amount of damage to the the USS Thor, but certainly not enough to sink it. So we're going to have to send our second wave, and this time we're sending entirely torpedo bombers. We don't have any large open deck targets, um, and we're not going to be going after the smaller ships. So really, dive bombing is going to be difficult and probably won't do much damage. We want some guaranteed hits, and we want to hit some big ships. So that's what torpedoes are really designed to do, and that's what we are going to go for. This time, of course, we don't have the Corsairs to worry about because they didn't have a carrier to land on. So the way our rules work is those Corsairs are now destroyed, essentially. Um, they cannot fight any longer because all the aircraft on a carrier are tied to the carrier itself. Anyway, here we go. We're lining up on the USS Thor, going in pretty damn fast. Um, we're very much pushing the very limit of, uh, of the uh, impact tolerance of these torpedoes. I really should not be able to go this fast and drop a torpedo, um, but thankfully we managed to pull it off. However, the slight problem with dropping a torpedo at that speed is uh, it's not really going to be lined up the way you were aiming it. Uh, it's going to bounce against the water a few times, get rocked about, and as such, that first torpedo actually misses the USS Thor very narrowly, but it does miss it, so we've wasted a torpedo. But 
nonetheless, we've got two more torpedoes, so we can keep having a go at this battle cruiser. This is a big, scary ship, and I would very much like it to be dead before we have to go through with the battle for Osiris. I'm surprised Tape hasn't launched any battleships yet. I mean, I, I know he probably doesn't want to put all his eggs in one basket with a battleship, but if he doesn't build a battleship of some kind, he is not going to be able to stop mine. The only way he can take out a battleship is either with lots of torpedoes, or another battleship, and he's not going to have a chance to launch torpedoes because um, I'm going to wreck all of his destroyers and such with my aircraft, and we just sank his aircraft carrier. So, yeah, tape, you need to build a battleship. Build the USS Iowa. Oh my god, please build the USS Iowa. Anyway, we've launched our first torpedo, and the second torpedo is now going in. Surely these should hopefully hit where the... Uh, the original torpedo did not. We're just going to get ourselves the hell out of dodge. Make sure we're not getting blown out of the sky by anti-aircraft guns. Uh, we've got quite good at dodging anti-aircraft fire now when we're not idiots and fly over the harbour. Uh, and as such, it isn't too difficult to get out of there without being blown out of the sky. Thank goodness we took out that light cruiser. Otherwise, we probably would have struggled a lot more. Sure enough, the second torpedo hits the USS Thor. And then, finally, the last torpedo goes in, rips off even more armor, but unfortunately, the USS Thor takes on a very, very scary keel to one side, but it does not sink, so tape can simply repair it. We run out of aircraft, run out of torpedoes, and ways to damage the Thor, so it will live to fight another day. But here we have it. Our two carriers have linked up with our main fleet, which now consists of two frigates, two aircraft carriers, four heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, one battleship, and a super battleship. <laughs> Tape is more than a little bit absolutely screwed. Unless he manages to pull some miracle out of his ass in the next couple of turns, he's well and truly screwed. Even a massive air attack on this fleet wouldn't be enough to stop it, and we kind of have air superiority now. Furthermore, we're attacking him on land as well. The first land battle with the new tank armor system and with all our new tank designs in the late World War II era. We have four of our heavy PT-5 adders, two medium variants. They just have medium armor because they're much cheaper and they sort of fit into our new point system a lot better. And six of our SM-15 Ninia cruiser tanks. A lot of you have wondered what cruisers are. They're sort of halfway between light tanks and medium tanks. So the armor is pretty crummy, but they have a reasonably powerful gun, very fast firing, and they are very, very mobile. They have 57 millimeter guns, so they won't be able to get through any heavy armor, but they should just about get through medium armor. And there we have it! That's all, Those are all occupying our old forward operating base. Well, now ours again, once more. And uh, there we have it. We will be invading Catenius Valley next turn, unless Tape attacks us, which I think he might be. He always has all the cool tank battles in his turn, uh, and I seem to have all the naval battles in mine. It's just a strange quirk of the uh, turn-based uh, system of Fall of Kerbin. Anyway, thank you for watching, everyone. I do hope you've enjoyed this. It, I'm sorry it's been so long. Um, it's taken ages to make this video, mainly because, as I said, we had problems with the torpedoes, and then that meant I couldn't get the video done before I went off to cadet camp. Yes, actual army stuff. I am an army cadet. Uh, I'm only a lance corporal, but I should be promoted very soon, so that'll be pretty cool. Anyway, I do hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching, everyone, and I will see you all next time.